So just to recap again, a little bit of, of what's been going on, that ISM manufacturing, a miss on the headline, albeit within the, the bottom end of the range, but the construction spending, quite a significant miss, negative 0.8, expectations were for a positive 0.4. Uh, you've also got new orders down a decent amount, 47.2 against 49.1. The employment constituent, which obviously a lot of people will be looking at as for the, the kind of quality of the jobs report we'll get from the BLS on Friday, that also moved lower by over a full point to 46.6. So yeah, immediate downside pressure to a market that was already on the back foot. Uh, obviously, the the kind of breakdown in the dialogue on the trade front, the break of some of the technical range that was trading at the last couple of days of last week has just exerted more kind of momentum behind some of these moves. Uh, just having a look elsewhere, oil hasn't really bitten as yet. You would normally in these types of correlations, if you're looking at a bad kind of um, setup here for the performance of manufacturing activity in the states that would normally see oil move lower the one thing is though the dollar is getting uh, or has been quite badly hit on the back of those numbers so just giving a bit of support but um, I just keep an eye on oil if it does start to be heavy it could re it could act as an added catalyst to break some of the lower bound levels in the US equity market so just seeing oil now just starting to tick a little lower, $56 on the futures uh, next stop. Then you've got the European opening morning low in the futures at 55.89 as a target. And there you go, just a little bit more coming in. And there the NAS there you go, the S&P now hits fresh session lows, just as that oil was ticking lower. And so if that oil price breaks that European morning low, you might see a bit more follow through in the equity move. Now the Nasdaq's right at that level on the lower bound as well, 83.04. So that was the bottom end of the range on Monday and some of the subsequent highs seen on the Thursday and Friday of that week, 21st and 22nd. A break of there, again, you might start to see a bit of added movement, momentum go through. The DAX as well, the DAX now through that low on the 20th and you can see how strong the selling momentum is there in the DAX. Next real target there in the DAX, you got the 13 thousand level and then you've got that rectangle there marked up on the left hand side you've got the high on the 28th and the beginning of november high wouldn't come in until 12 9 79 so yeah it looks like definitely we've got a bit of room to to get down at that point because technically well you've got the 1300 which is really captures some of those support levels on the fourth is your first test any break of that i'll be looking down at those previous um, highs seen at late october early november Uh, just having a look elsewhere, gold initially blipped up, came back, now it's starting to rise again. Just running into a little bit of resistance for the moment at a high we printed on the 26th. That encapsulates some of the lows of the price action as well that we've had back in mid-November. It needs to really get its head above there if it's going to target up at around the, the high that we saw at the end of last week. Yeah, interesting there. You see the you see the bounce in the S and P, exactly on the opening price to the tick of where we opened on Monday with the gap up, on some of the positive trade developments and the pro democracy local elections we had in Hong Kong. That was that gap up in the S and P. We literally tested it to the tick and just bounced about four points on the back of that. So that would have been your kind of maximum payoff of trying to get out of chasing that 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 order flow coming in, hitting market on the momentum on that break uh, of that range, and now the market's just pulling back quite severely. <laughs> 